Welcome to Frame Rate. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for a show called Money Shots, where we talk a little bit about movie news, things that are going on in the movie world. And we've got three topics and three topics for our yay or nay section. Dalton, would you like to get right into things or not? Absolutely. Throw it at me. What are we talking about first? Venom. Venom. Set an October record with $80.2 million in its debut, the debut weekend of the movie. Halloween, this is going to be a little bit dated by the time this video drops, we apologize, may or may not break that record, but will certainly challenge it after $7.7 .7 million in midnight shows alone. How do you feel about the beginning of the Venom franchise and the continuation of the Halloween franchise? Thoughts the on either series? Let's start with I'm Venom. I'm going to interrupt you one more time. Yes, please. Let's start with Venom here. This series makes no goddamn sense to me whatsoever. Uh, so we are in an era now where we have successfully incorporated an R-rated uh, comic book character. The we, Deadpool we, franchise. We have the Deadpool franchise. Went over also well. We also have Logan. We also have Logan. Went over incredibly well. How the hell do we have a PG-13 Venom, which should have easily been R-rated film, doing so well? The, well, the reason you have a PG-13 Venom film is because I believe Sony, who are ham-fistedly ruining everything they touch, <laughs> are hoping to God that they can find some way to incorporate the Marvel franchise, the Marvel okay. Cinematic okay. Universe into theirs, or theirs into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that's why you keep that rated PG-13, but it's not going to happen, it's just not. The movie is not on Marvel Cinematic Universe no. levels. No. So, that's the reason you have a PG-13 Venom movie. The reason it's doing so well is because, A, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. B, Venom is an extremely popular character. C, the Venom symbiote uni uh, uniform, the, the look of the character is very comic accurate. Okay, okay. And D, you probably confused a lot of people into thinking it's going to be rated R. Because they know the character. But again, let's look at it from this point uh, here. Uh, let's uh, piss on the Marvel Universe. Okay. Piss ahead. on him. We're on our own here with Venom. Take Tom Hardy. Let him go, rated R. I with that comic book style, you have gold. You have absolute gold. But at this point, it, it, it's, gonna, it's watered down. It just feels watered down to me. I absolutely agree with you. But you're talking, again, about Sony. True. You asked why. I told you why. If you asked me how come, I can't really give you an answer for that one. You know a great idea? Let's reboot Venom again in two years and make him younger. And yeah. then two years from now, let's make him even younger. Yeah. And just keep going until we have a, a great, great option. <laughs> Toby Maguire as Venom. I'd watch that. Yeah, I, I, would, would, watch I would watch that. that. Um, so further, moving forward, how do you feel about the Halloween franchise continuing? I like the Halloween franchise. Okay, so I am a big fan of that uh, sweet 80s fl uh, slasher flick. Uh, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, uh, that genre. That's good. That's ingrained in my childhood. In fairness, though, the Halloween franchise had a bit of a different feel from sl from standard slasher. It did. It, it did. had more of a, 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 if I can use the term, survival horror feel to it. I would give you that, but it is iconic. And it's always put alongside with Jason. It's always put alongside with Freddy. You have Michael Myers. This looks phenomenal absolutely phenomenal. You have Jamie Lee Curtis reprising her role, which, first and foremost, that sold me already. I believe you even have the original actor back playing Michael Myers. And it just looks great. Uh, everything about the trailer looks great. It's, it's doing incredibly well uh, for the initial midnight shows. Uh, I think it is going to be a great contender for Venom. I'm, I'm split on, okay. on the new Halloween movie. I, the trailers were fantastic. They brought back the suspense yes. feeling of the original movie. I don't know how I feel about the Jamie Lee Curtis character. Really? Yeah. Oh, um, no, you have to have her. No, no, you have to have her. Should she be this gung-ho, I'm going to kill this son of a bitch I've been waiting? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't understand that aspect What of do you it. got to lose at that point? No, no, absolutely. Like, I, I just don't know. I don't know that I'm feeling it. Like, in, in fairness, I haven't seen the movie. And that scene in that open yard where the man's holding the mask and saying, Michael, that's gorgeous. Yes. There is so much to be worked with here. My only fear with this is we got everything in the trailer. Yeah. All it, the good parts were right there. What, where, where are you going to go from that? In, but in fairness, again, to the Halloween franchise, it has not been a trailer moments franchise. Okay. There have been moments that make four great trailers. That is not the meat of the film. It is a suspense-type film that those trailer-type moments 
feel so much weightier than they do in the trailer because of the rest of the happenings in the movie. Okay. Because all of the slow, plodding Michael yeah. Myers that feels like the super zombie, right? I have high hopes for it. I really do. Yeah. Great hopes for it. I hope it overtakes Venom. Moving along, Ryan Coogler will return to write and direct Black Panther 2. Thoughts, feelings, concerns? I'm all about it. I think it's great. Black Panther was an amazing success. Destroyed records. Destroyed records, and uh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, Give the man another shot. He struck gold. See if he can do it again. If he can build that franchise even further, absolutely go for it. Sounds great to me. Here's the part that worries me. The PlayStation 2 type graphics in the Black Panther movie. Now, uh, the argument can absolutely be made that so much talent was being poured onto the Avengers... True. Uh, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity War movie, that there was very little left to work on a Black Panther movie, which dropped just months before. Unfortunately, with Marvel going forward, they're going to be running into those film problems a lot with the, the aspect of we've got all of these special effects we need to do, where is most of our talent going to be appropriated, where will the most talented people be, because I think, going forward, once they have, once they have absorbed Fantastic Four and the X Men from Fox, I think they're going to be dropping four movies a year. Okay, I really do. It's a fair worry. It is. However, Black Panther survived the first time around with those problems. Yeah, the, and it excelled. The it movie, met every expectation, but the movie itself suffered in those regards. Right, And these days, a great movie with poor special effects does not score all the points that it could. I think, though, with the success the original Black Panther had, they are going to see that, and they are, they're going to make sure this one's a little more crisp. And that's fine, because if we can get that level of quality with that high-budget crispness, we're great. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's going to be well. It is a very Marvel-heavy day on Money Shots. There was some concern with Disney creating their own streaming service, um, and which would be a competitor for Netflix, that the Netflix-based Marvel properties might leave. That is no longer a worry, as reportedly Marvel's Netflix shows will stay on Netflix. What does this mean going forward for Marvel, for Netflix, and for the Disney streaming service? Uh, Netflix is huge. I have no idea why Disney has decided they want to take on Netflix. uh, Because uh, let's look at our other options here. Let's look at Hulu. That's a great alternative. It's not Netflix, but you know, whatever. Uh, Let's look at Amazon Prime. There's no contender for Netflix. Netflix was the original. Netflix is doing it right. Uh, The Marvel series are all wonderful. Absolutely. And I'm glad they're staying with Netflix because they're going to get the uh, care that they deserve. Uh, We're talking, of course, about uh, Luke Cage... Uh, Daredevil, Punisher. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, Iron Fist has been canceled. Okay. So that will not be moving forward. Jessica Jones, uh, so th- those properties. No problems whatsoever. And, you know, David Tennant's and Jessica Jones. So, you know, like, right. we're good there. Okay. Everything is fine. Uh, but no, I-, I think it's great that they're staying with Netflix. The Netflix originals are always uh, quality. Uh, it- it's a very rare day that I see a Netflix original and I'm upset with it. So I, I, I am happy with it. They're doing great with their TV series. They're doing great with their films. Uh, please bring back Disjointed. I think it's great. I can tell you exactly why they're taking on Netflix. One, I still think that Netflix is in the red for production. Okay. Because they're spending so much on developments, research and development, that they're not really making much money right now. Okay. But... Netflix followed Amazon when Amazon changed the world and made a standard need a monthly cost. Okay. You want to shop on Amazon, you can get Amazon Prime for X dollars a month. You want to see your movies, you can see all of the movies you want that we host for X dollars a month. It is a great business plan for making money. The reason Disney will be successful is because Netflix doesn't have the Disney princesses. Okay. Netflix doesn't have Frozen. I want to see Frozen. I got to buy the movie or I got to pay for Disney okay. streaming service. So they're going to have all the Disney princess movies, which I, I hate to refer to them in that way, but that's what they are, right? Okay. You're, you're, 
now you're going to have all of the live action Disney movies that they're going back and redoing, which have been very popular and very successful. Aladdin looks great. Aladdin with Will Smith very looks well great. Done. Looks very well done. We've only got a sneak peek so far, uh, but what we do have looks great. You're going to have all of the Marvel films that aren't going to be on Netflix now. Okay. You're going to have original series produced and paid for by Disney. What this means to me, what I am excited about for this, is that there's going to be, you're going to have to create many new series for this. Absolutely. It is, it's it necessary. Is, so one of the things they're doing, Tom Hiddleston's Loki is going to have a series on the Disney streaming service. Okay. Very exciting to see, to hear about, right? What I am interested in, what are these other properties which are going to get testing grounds through the Disney streaming service? Who are these other writers and directors and producers who are going to get a say and develop a voice through this smaller medium, which will then be a training grounds for, okay, we raised and developed you through our system. Now you are the next person to get a Marvel okay. Cinematic Universe movie. And I think that might be their saving grace uh, because uh, the, the one thing that I uh, kind of threw me for a loop here is uh, it's a money aspect. Who has the money to take on Netflix? Well, Disney's got the money to take on Netflix. They sure does. You know who else had the money? Amazon. Amazon. That didn't work so well. But when you're bringing in that Disney content, that established Disney content, and your established Disney characters, that's going to save you there. So it's going to be an interesting fight, right. honestly. They're going to have a much more auspicious start than did Amazon Prime. Or Amazon, what is it called? Is it Prime? Yes. Okay. Then did Amazon Prime. Um, so I think that this is where you're, you've got a stable. Basically, before Toys R Us went belly up, Disney owned 80% of Toys R Us. They had the Disney Princess stuff, they have the Star Wars stuff, and the Marvel stuff. Very the true. only thing that was traipsing around the Toys R Us aisles that Disney didn't own was DC, correct? So what you're doing here is you've got all of this wealth of Americana, of culture, um, already loaded in the gun. You've just got to pull the trigger. I think what's going to save them, it, it, it's those Disney classics. It's the Disney princess films. Uh, because to this day, it, it's hard to turn down a Disney movie, especially from your childhood. Absolutely. And if I can't get it on Netflix, guess I'm going to have to go to the Disney stream. And they're going to continue to make the live action movies. Absolutely. Which seems to be very lucrative for them. We'll see. It's going to be a fair fight. Moving forward, finally, yay or nay, we've got discussions on movie trailers. Do they look good or do they look bad? Vice. The Vice trailer dropped. We got a sneak peek of Christian Bale... Um, as Dick Cheney. As Dick Cheney. Holy shit. Yay or nay? Christian Bale. Yay. yay. All the way yay. Steve Carell, Christian Bale. Uh, my God. Uh, it, it looks phenomenal. I don't even care what story they're telling, to be very honest. Now, they're, they're telling the story of how basically there was the rumor that Dick Cheney was running the country where yeah. George W. Bush was out uh, making America great again, right? So that is the story. I don't care. I no. don't care if that's the story. You give me two hours of Sam Rockwell as George Bush standing alongside Dick Cheney. I'm in. Christian Bale eating chicken wings, just talking about the White House. I'll watch the whole thing. Yeah. Absolutely so. There will be gold in there somewhere. It, it's it's going to be great. So it looks yay. amazing. Absolute yay. The trailer dropped for Creed 2. Yay or nay? I, so oh, I'm torn on this one here uh, because I feel like we are going to go down the rocky path of maybe Rocky was great. Rocky 2 was great. Rocky 57 started to uh, kind of tuck her out for him, but then Rocky Balboa came. Yeah. And then Creed came, and Creed was phenomenal. Creed was one of the best movies that I saw. Absolutely. That year. I think this has great potential. I think it has a good story. I think it is a good throwback. Uh, I, I'm excited to see it, and I, maybe I just have a soft spot for the Rocky movie, but I gotta give it a yay. I I've have to. to. I've gotta give it a yay, too, and like you, I'm torn. Like, there's no reason for me to doubt this. But looking back at Creed, there were so many Rocky beats. I'm worried that in Creed 2, there will be so many Rocky 2 beats. There are so many Rocky 2 beats in the trailer, aren't there? There are. But here's what we're going to see. We're going to see something we've never seen in the Rocky movies before. And that is going to be moving forward without Rocky. Because he's going to die. Yeah. You know that's coming. Yeah. He has to. Absolutely has to. I don't know. And can you continue a Rocky series without Rocky Balboa? That is going to be the defining factor of this. If he passes in Creed 2 and we can move on and budget and finance a Creed 3, 
it's a success. Creed three, I guarantee you, is already green lit. Um, I think you can absolutely do it and move forward without the Rocky Balboa character. You didn't even rely on him in the first one. Okay. Right. It's okay. just called Creed. It is Creed. I, I think the uh, it is not it is not Creed. A Rocky Balboa story, like the Star Wars, okay, okay, like the Star Wars franchises are going. For. Uh, it, it's a yay for me. I, I think it's going to do well. I'm excited for it. Uh, I I don't want to be disappointed by it. Finally, yay or nay on the Stan and Ollie trailer. The, this is a story of Laurel and Hardy, which sounds and looks very Adrian and Dalton. It does. It's terrifying to see in that aspect. So I want it to do well. And let me tell you, when I first saw that trailer. You could have fooled me that was John C. Riley. Yeah. My God. The, that is, it blows my mind. I still can't wrap my, my mind around the fact that that is John C. Riley. Uh, really flexing his chops, uh, for sure here. However, I think this is a good old Hollywood gangbang movie. What? Good old Hollywood gangbang movie where we have all the good elements of Hollywood. We have the classic Laurel and Hardy, the classic problems, the classic uh, biopic. The classic biopic. All those good Hollywood moments set in Hollywood. Uh, it's going to throw everything there. I don't think it's going to do well. I don't think it's going to deliver. Well, it's no for me. It's not going to hit comic book movie numbers. Um, but oh. I've, I've, Steve Coogan, man, don't argue with Steve Coogan. It has so much going for it. It does. It really has everything it needs to be successful. And uh, Laurel and Hardy were huge in their era. But I guarantee if we walked outside right now and went to talk to somebody and say, Hey, you ever seen that Laurel and Hardy? Not a clue who you're talking about. Right. They're going to try to revive it. It's not going to go well. It's a no for me. I don't think it's going to be successful. I say yay. John C. Riley looks impressive. Steve Coogan is always impressive. <sighs> okay. Uh, it, John C. Riley flexing his chops is going to be exciting. I, I would like to see that. And so far, so good. The trailer does look good. I just don't think it's going to hit the level of success that everybody's wanting it to do. Three movies, three yays from nay. Three movies, two yays from Dalton. And a nay. Uh, this has been Money Shot. We are looking to do this more often on the channel so if you are here for the first time which hopefully someone is here for the first time because we're hoping to grow um hit that subscribe button and we hope to keep bringing you these in the near future um and we will see you next time on money shots I'm bad. Felt like three. I say Hollywood gangbang. I'm like, yeah. <sighs>